Carl Malenko coming off a loss by decision to Vanderlei Silva, Fight Fighting Championships number seven on September 12, 1999. Going up against Alan Goes from the Carlson Gracie team. Alan, a master of submission. And Alan had a draw against Kazushi Sakuraba, and that was in uh, the Pride Fighting Championships number four. If this fight goes to the ground, I've got to believe that Alan is going to be in charge. Uh, it has to. I mean, and if he goes to the ground and he's on his back and Malenko stands up, also it's in, uh, in Alan's favor. Look at this. You go for the takedown. Uh, now, that was a mistake by Malenko, I believe, because he should have sprawled back and tried to stay standing because you don't want to play the guard game with Alan Goes. I don't think so. And Alan probably is going to pass the guard also. Yeah, but we don't know because we saw uh, Carl Malenko out grapple Egan Inouye, but to be fair, Alan Goes may be the better of the two between Egan uh, Inouye. Oh, yeah, I think so, too. I believe so, too. I think he's got a... A big arsenal of attacks. Here we go. He's going to grab the arm. Oh my God! You see, he has to try to pass it, uh, pull his leg out, and he's doing it right now. I guess. Yeah. Allen already has gotten out of Carl Malenko's guard. He's already got side control. Yeah, that was, for what I can remember, Egan couldn't do that, huh? Was that he could come to side control? Or was the other way around? No, it was the other way around. Uh, Carmelenko, uh, Egan got the guard constantly, constantly, constantly. He got a real good guard, actually. Egan, Egan had a great guard, and he controlled Carmelenko. But Carmelenko got the takedowns and landed more punches and got the decision, although it was close and wasn't a terribly exciting one. But we might have a different animal here in Alan Goes. Alan Goes, just his training partners alone, when you've got Marilla Bustamante, Mario Sperry, Carlos Barreto, uh, and the list goes on, Valid Ishmael, to roll with every day, it's really going to be hard to find guys better than that, just straight grappling-wise, unless you go to Sakuraba or some of these other new phenoms. Yeah. Well, it was good left straight there from Alan already. So he's... It looks like he's going to mix punches up with submissions, which, by the way, is the best combination, of course. You don't want to give Karl Malenko a little space because he's going to escape. We saw him escape pretty much impossible situations, and he did it. So, Alan, I'm sure that Alan saw those, those videos. Well, it's interesting. Now, Alan oh. gets the mounted position. And this has always been a bad position to be in. There he is, the legend himself, Carlson Gracie, shouting the instructions. And Alan there with a shoulder strike. <laughs> yeah, that's his thing, huh? <laughs> I like that. Well, what, what I was going to say is that the fight Alan is fighting against Carmelenko is entirely different than the fight we saw him fight against Kazushi Sakuraba on October 11, 1998. He was on the bottom. He was... On the ground, Sakuraba was standing up, and he threw a lot of kicks going straight up. Whereas Malenko is on the bottom now. We're getting to see Alan Goh's top game in this fight. Whereas Goh's was on the bottom in the guard, for, for the most part, uh, in the Sakuraba fight. Yeah, he's... He's going to have to start moving. The referee will give him a warning. So he has to work. Otherwise, all the efforts would have been for nothing. And they're going to back, stand back on the feet. Alan chopping away, working to set up any kind of submission. And you better believe he's going to go for a submission. With a strike, going body-body, expect a head. Look, at, there it is, the shoulder strike again. It is a legal strike. The only illegal strikes that we have here are the headbutts or any strikes to the groin or back of the spine or back of the head. Everything else is legal. No elbows, no headbutts. 
and everything else goes. Pardon the pun. And at the front of the spine. Is that okay? Total control, stays relaxed, been in this position a thousand, maybe two thousand or thousands of time. I mean in training. <laughs> Not in fights, but he probably trains like one, two times a day, you know, since he was six years old. Six? Yeah, probably, maybe maybe three. I mean, in Brazil, this is, uh, this is like a national thing to do. With us uh, here in America, they go fishing, there they do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Or a ball game here. Is Malenko going to try and turn Alan Goh's boss? He, he, he can try, but it's not going to happen. I think he should try to escape. Armbar! Oh, sloppy, sloppy. He fell out of it. He made it. Hit us. Okay, now, I, I've argued the point that Alan Goh's is more effective on the bottom. Yeah. He went for the armbar from the top, and Malenko was able to shuck his way out of it. But now goes is on the bottom. He's got a great triangle choke from, from the bottom. Yeah, so let's see if he can do it. But that armbar was a... Uh, yeah. We've seen it a few times now, and uh, I think uh, a few people forget to cross face. It's all the stress also in the fight. There are a lot of things to think about. Oh, nice. And now normal straight armbar. Ooh, he had two armbars there. The figure four and a straight armbar. Both escaped. Carl Malenko seems a little bit hesitant to throw strikes in this position. Do you think it's because he doesn't want to give away his arm? Yeah, listen. What do you think, Stephen? I think it is. Yeah, I think so too. Of course. Push him to the corner now. Push him to the corner. Let's go. Alan seems to have a really good sense of humor, which brings to mind, boss, in the game, what fighter do you think is the most sincere? Uh, define sincere. Well, the opposite of Boss Rutten. No, I'm jokingly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whoa, look at this attack. They go and keep going. Okay, he's still in the guard. I... I I uh, think Steven Quadros, uh, that's the answer. But I'm not a fighter, I'm a commentator. I'm a journalist. I'm, I'm merely a man behind a microphone. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, will, I will give you an answer at the end of the fight. Let's see here. What Malenko is up to, and it looks like he's going for a leg log. I think a leg lock would be a mistake because if he falls back, yeah. Alan is going to mount him again. Yeah, it depends. If he keeps holding it two legs, then not. But he has to stick a leg. If it is going to be very difficult to fall. Oh, oh, that was beautiful. Wow. It was a double leg elevator flip over by Alan Goes, but they're back in the same position again. Yeah, but he's going to do it again. Or he's going to kick him away and he's going to kick him in the head. The last time you saw this. He's grabbing the glove. There, I was waiting for Alan to punch him because his face is right there. Alan's hands are right there. Just let go and punch he should, him. He should smack his knees together there. Clang, clang on the ears. Huh? Good move. <laughs> Better than thigh master. Better than thigh master. You train your thighs. Oh, no nice. shooting. Getting the double leg. Nice takedown. Alan is good with the takedowns. I mean, Tom Malenko is a good wrestler. There we go again. Oh. Okay, he's got the mount again now. What he needs to do. Oh, side choke. Oh, he's got the side he's got choke. He's got the side choke. He's I got think that's it. He should lay next to Malenko. It's over. I, I think he's out. I, I think he just he just dropped. Oh, he tapped out. He tapped out from the side choke. 
Malenko is completely frustrated and angry with himself, yelling out loud. Goes really, really clean. Beautiful. On the what a guy. Uh oh. Did I hear the F word? Malenko got caught. Evidently, that must be a submission that he really, really feels bad about getting caught with. Yeah, it's, 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 it's